Hello, and welcome to another episode of The Clever Dev. Today, what we're going to do is we're going to take this basic table from Material UI, and I'm going to add a search bar to the top of it, uh, so you'll be able to search on this first column here. And I will include links to uh, additional code for this demo in the video details, so make sure and expand that and take a look at that. And there will be um, additional images of the completed work down there as well, or links to it. Um, and so, as usual, if this video is helpful, please consider subscribing. So let's take a look at the code sandbox that is linked from the docs. So here we have, once again, that basic table. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to enable TypeScript, and we're going to pull in a small library that's literally just called Material, Material UI Search Bar, and it just has one function, one job, which is to um, be a search bar for a table. So that doesn't come standard in Material, material UI, it's a third party library, but it does the trick. So we'll hook that in. So first thing, let's get TypeScript in here. And then, like I said, it's simply called Material UI Search Bar. So now we got that. It's just version 1.0.0 at the time of uh, making this video. So let's go ahead and uh, update this data here. We're going to put in an interface, make it TypeScript friendly, and um, update this. But after I get the interface in, I won't make you watch me put in the data there or convert it to TypeScript, really. But anyway, we're going to have name, it's going to be string, calories, number, that number. Having that first column as a string and having TypeScript in here, it just makes it easier to uh, search on a table because we're going to be searching for a string. And so um, when you're doing something where, where type matters, then it makes a lot of sense to have TypeScript in, in your JavaScript code. But really it makes sense um, most of the time to reduce bugs by bringing in TypeScript, even for a small little demo like this. So we're going to leave this styling alone. And um, like I said, I brought in some data here. So we'll just copy paste that in so you don't have to watch me work on that. So we're good to go there with that. So let's see, we need to get rows defined. Um, or we need original. Uh, we, I changed the name to original rows and we'll see why in a little bit, but let's get that popped back in. So there we go, our data is showing now, so back in a good place with that. So let's go ahead and add just our search bar, and then we'll have some functions associated with it. Um, I'll wrap it in paper. I always like how paper looks with material UI. And wrap the, uh, put the closing tag on that paper element. Handy thing is that that um, gives us something to wrap this entire table in so that we don't get that error that um, the return has to have only one element at the top level of it. So here we have the search bar. And it's really, the search bar itself, it's really quite simple. Uh, we just, we don't even have a real closing tag, just that shorthand for it. We'll put in the value, um, let's call it search. So that's the current value. Then we'll need an on change because what we want in this demo is for my typing to automatically perform a search. I think most people would expect that these days. So let's we'll have a little function. I'll go ahead and call it request search. And we'll do an on cancel. And so as you can see, with TypeScript in here, it just knows what functions are available. So that's pretty handy. So on cancel search and on change are built-in functions. So we'll put in a little handler, handler simply called cancel search. That handler will be pretty straightforward because um, it's basically just a reset of the data. All right. So... I'll remove this create data function for now. So we've got our data. 
Now, let's get a little bit of state in here. We'll just add it right above this use styles handler here, or this use styles hook here. And before I go on, I should add my uh, use state hook. Oh, and this is interesting. Let's look at this error for a minute. So, dependency not found, material UI icons. So, it looks like the search bar um, requires material UI icons. So, let's see. Um, it just wants it as a dependency over here. There we go. Let's see if that fixes things. Yep, looks happier already. So we don't actually have the, oh, let's see, search is not defined. Yeah, we'll get to that. So anyway, um, that got through one error. So let's get these these values in here. So I'm going to add our data back in, or our data in with a rows state variable. Rows, set rows. we're going to tell this that rows is an array of food objects, uh, since we define that interface above. And we're going to give it original rows. So this original rows is what we had up there. So let's let that think for a moment. Okay, so now that, now that that's in there, I actually do want to use this rows state variable down here. So we're going to put that right here. So we'll get to why in a minute, why I did it like that. All right, so it's back. So let's see, what do we need next? We need search, which is what it's complaining about. I get the right kind of brackets in there. Search set search. So we'll say that equals use state, and we'll just say that search. That's going to be a string, right? We're typing in string. We're typing in strings in the search bar that we'll have. Okay, so there's that. And what do we need? We need a request search and a cancel search. So for now, let's just put in some empty functions. Okay, and actually before. Go on there. Looks like the code sandbox is updated. Probably doesn't realize that it should be unhappy with these, but code sandbox is kind of funny sometimes. But anyway, we can see uh, the search bar appearing up there. And so we see why it was a little unhappy about not having material UI icons. We see the search icon right there. So anyway, um, things are looking up. So we've got request search. I'll just have that be nothing for now. And what else we need? We need our cancel search. Most of them just trying to get rid of all the errors right now. All right. And we need search bell. Let's see. So we need that in our request search. And we'll let TypeScript know that that's going to be a string. All right. So this is good. Let's see. Make sure we got rid of all of our errors. That's good. We did. Okay, so let's take a look and see. Yeah, we've got our table coming together. Um, it's wrapped in paper, but you can't really tell that very much yet. So anyway, we can type in here, but it doesn't do anything because our Lambda functions, our request search is empty. All right, let's do the easy one first. Let's deal with cancel search. That is just a quick function where we say set search. It's just an empty string. So that will remove whatever we've typed there. And let's say request search. Okay. 
and we'll say um, we'll just say search. So we've got we type up there, we hit that X, we see that our set search goes back to nothing. So that's good. And I might decide that we don't need this. I'm just kind of thinking about it right now. Um, so let's go up to our request search. I think we're getting pretty close to being done, which shows really how quick and easy this um, search bar component is. So let's see, request search. We've got, uh, we've got our search file parameter in there. So we want to have const. We're going to, the search, search is basically a filter here. So it's a string filter. And this gets into why we have the original rows. And we're going to use the dot filter function, just the built-in JavaScript ES6 function there. So let's see. We're going to say, so row is just the element in original rows, or the item in original rows. So we're going to say, return this if row.name. I always like to use two lowercase. Keeps things um, safer and easier. You don't have you're not scratching your head wondering what's going on when your search would be fine, except the cases aren't matching. We'll say it includes the search spell. search file instead of just search file. There we go. And now um, we'll take this filtered rows that we've created. Uh, so it's returned a new array of filtered rows and we're going to say set rows filtered rows. All right, now let's see how that looks. All right, we're in luck. We're in business because already just typing the P of pizza, that looks good. Uh, let me see if any of these, let's type in H. So that's narrowed it down to hot dog and hamburger. So that's good. Um, those are both looking good. Let me see if we can delete this. I'm thinking off the top of my head that I don't actually need that. We'll see. Let's just go ahead and put in ham for hamburger. Hit the X on that. Oh, no, we do need that. Yeah, I was thinking right in the, the first place. Okay, so, oh, of course. So we're setting search to absolutely nothing, to just a empty string. And so when we do that, then set searched is updating searched. And so then we're doing a request search with search, which is empty string. And so that's making, um, making our search not have a parameter with which to filter by. So then, um, that resets our table. So that's what we want. Let me refresh that. Show that that's working well. All right, looks good. Looks good. All right, so that should be all there is to it. Uh, you would likely want to update your styling on your paper component up here, and on your uh, search bar, so that it just is offset a little bit more. But I think we're we're good for now for the purposes of this demo. So really, with our search bar. There's just these three, um, these three props that you have to give it, and you're going to be good to go with a, a search that um, filters a basic table pretty easily and has a nice little cancel functionality to it. So I hope you enjoyed the demo, and please uh, hit subscribe. It really motivates me. Have a great day.